My ambition is firstly to bring forth the teachings of the bees of Crowley so that the world will take to Crowleyanity and to his religion Thelema in place to Christianity which is also in accordance with the wishes of Crowley himself. This I hope will secondly endeavour to bring the world domination of the supreme ruler of this planet Earth. start and to carry on as I begin in my uh, undertaking to forward the word of the beast by any method I can possibly lay my hands on, such as um, magazine articles, newspaper articles, um, on the radio and on the TV if possible, but ultimately to get the people together in a large gathering at some stadium or large place. Plenty of music as in our records with the songs and words of Crowley on. And that once we have these people together, I might bring them even closer to the words and teachings of Crowley. By my own self, my guardian angel portrayed through my voice and also through the power of a miracle, if it be. Well, I'd like to try for two in one to be able to levitate at least 20 or 30 feet from the ground and then to call fire either out of the heavens or from my own fingertips to um, set an object to light to show that I have the power and the ability to do this so that if people attempt to um, go against me, that I don't need an army behind me, I can destroy them all by myself, if need be. Well, the um, move, moving of objects, so instead of burning a person or killing a person, I might move an object to strike that person to prevent them from doing me any physical harm, and to uh, control the person's body so I can make that person um, double up in pain or move their arm when they don't wish to move their arm or such, right? I uh, attempted to give my assessment of what I would do once I was in power, but to put it in such a way that I would gain in as a friend instead of in a, as an adversary. The Archbishop of Canterbury Well, he sent a nice letter back saying I should try to start some little group, but that is easier said than done. I was hoping that he would give me back in himself, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and I wouldn't need to start a group on my own. He's the head of the Church of England, yes, but he carries weight on a political level as well. Well, to help me, as he is known as a responsible person and looked at by the country practically, if he could turn around and say, I was okay, and that people should listen to what I have to say, and then probably I, I could take a step forward. I thought I'd give it a try, but it didn't really work out. Um, I've approached uh, somebody who was with Alistair Crowley and recognises me as a true abdat, but I said, yes, I'm not allowed to reveal his name. Uh, not, of, not as of yet. Um, in the near future, I hope to be able to um, approach probably Prince Charles to begin with, as he's on a more sort of a friendly type level. Thank you.
Yes, that was as part of the Mass of the Phoenix. The um, life force has to be let forth and you can um, use either human blood or animal blood or so on. And this, I decided to use a, an egg as it's less messy. Well, I had the egg inside of a um, silver type goblet and um, after the correct invocation of chorus, I then um, stabbed the eggs, letting forth the life force. What actually happened? Well, it didn't help the ritual in any particular presence. It's not there to make a um, materialization or anything. The source of it, of the egg, is in the source of really as the blood in itself. It's for the making of the cakes of light, which are eaten, as in place of the um, bread and wine sort of thing. It's blood and, and um, blood and flour, sort of meal and flour. The idea. Um, I think that is a a joke by somebody. I know that it was supposed to be that when Mary Butt saw Crowley at, uh, at Caffalo at Sicily, she was offered a, a goat's turd on a plate, which is a symbol of pan. 
Well, um, I think the story is not really true, as with a few others that have uh, come about from Mary Butts and a few other people who yeah, are misinterpreted or such like. You've been referred to in the press sometimes as one of Mr. Farron's disciples. Did you remember him? I wasn't a disciple, Mr. Farron. I went to see Mr. Farron as I thought he may help me in a certain ritual I was undertaking. I completely forgotten. <laughs> we got talking about it, and he didn't seem really to be interesting. Interested in the ritual, rather. He seemed to know, want to know how much I knew about magic, and we discussed. And I seemed to like, to like him, sort of. I found him a sort of mysterious person sort of uh, very closed, I couldn't get into his mind like I do with most people. And so I thought I'd like to see more of him and find out more. And um, he asked if I'd like to come to a Halloween ceremony they were holding. And he brought along a, on the night in question I come along, he brought along a certain woman who I already knew. In what circumstances I will not um, say. But um, I've not seen her since, and I wouldn't uh, disclose her secrets to anybody. But um, we went along to this uh, ceremony, and it was a completely washout. to explain to him it was an invocation and I would be possessed by Pan. I was possessed by Pan and began to go into a trance and sat on the floor, really broke myself on this candle I think, and um, started talking but he was wearing with his arms about, yakking and waving his knife about and uh, trying to get this uh, thing to appear in this triangle where it was inside of me. I think I was on that occasion, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I don't think so. I don't think he particularly likes taking his clothes off, not for photographs or uh, films like that.
I was looking for the talisman of Seth, which at that time I didn't realise was a an imp. It was um the talisman of Seth is a way of describing one's. It was an exponent of sex magic. It was risen the fire snake by the use of sex magic, as the fire snake Seth and Satan are one and the same sort of thing. And he's not somebody with horns and a long tail dancing about round a fire. Some people seem to think, but um, I thought it was an actual talisman, and I went to Romania, apart from wanting to see the country itself, to perform the Mass of the Vampire, form of necromantic, necromantic ritual, to raise the spirit of a uh, Vlad Tepes, Dracula, so that I could um, ask him if he knew where the talisman was. Well, we went to the main city, Bucharest, or Bucharest, whichever it's called, first of all. Then we made our way to um, um, a small town in the middle of the mountains between Transylvania and Wallachia. Wallachia is the flat plains grounds of Romania and Transylvania. It's the Transylvanian Alps that lead up to the Carpathians. The castle of Dracula is situated by the, um, the, the Argrish River on a peninsula which is a thousand foot. A modern road now runs around it, which at one time wasn't there. The mountain is, and the castle is situated anyway say I think about five miles from the nearest town there's a small village below but most people don't pay much attention to that you have to get up the mountain by a footpath that runs up a neighbouring hill there's no road up oh yes it was uh, about an hour's climb up and it, it's just like in some of the horror films this peninsula and this small like jagged fort sticking up and you cross over on some wooden bridges onto the uh, peninsula itself well there was nothing extraordinary about it I was expecting a real atmosphere but it was just like crawling over these sort of um, modern stones that have been placed there because the others had collapsed no they wouldn't the uh, Romanian government wouldn't let me do that. Perform the Master of Empire at Castle Dracula. I had to wait until we returned to the hotel where we were staying at the uh, town, which is uh, five miles away. I performed the Master of Empire there. Nothing. I couldn't get anything. I was able to contact my guardian angel. Um, my guardian angel. Well, the guardian angel is your subconscious. And uh, it mentions something about a black ring. I would receive a black ring. Not so far. But it... <laughs> it was about... Um, I went there in April. April 1970... Uh, 1975. I think that's correct. <coughs> um, I've not actually been inside of Highgate Cemetery, no. I don't wish to go in there, no. I think there's probably a couple of powerful thought forms chasing about in there which could be quite harmful if you weren't prepared for them sort of thing. with a certain agency which is dealing with certain records, the voices of Crowley, and I have dealings with certain people connected with Crowley when he was alive. And through these different uh, arrangements, I hope to be able to make my advance on the world as um, the false prophet. Um, apart from the 
these connections with the um, the agency, if the opportunity arises that someone or a me into a magazine to talk about Crowley and such like, um, not on my own. I won't be able to, because I haven't got the um, well, the right contacts for that sort of thing. I have to get more into the sort of the public eye. I have to let people know who I am. Write another article that could be published. Another one? Yeah, so the last one sort of we've got a bit carried away. Did you, did you have I've had quite a few published. Did you um, yes. Where, 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 where? Well, I had one published in Here's Health magazine. But I didn't keep this strictly to um, the idea of Crowley, it was basis of what is the occult as apart from other practices of magic which I've proceeded to explain.